Welcome back. Our guest is Aliancy Calis. He was born in Jack Mill, Haiti. He came to the United States in the 80s to continue his education. And in 1995, he joined the military, graduated from Johnson C. Smith University in Charlotte, North Carolina, also the United States Air Force Community College. Upon his return from Afghanistan, he separated from the military. Calis is the founder of Fondation Aliancy Calis International Inc., which uh, concentrated on education, agriculture, and health to help uh, make a difference in the lives of the disadvantaged youth in Haiti. Mr. Callis, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you very much for the invitation, uh, Mr. Uh, James Pierre. And uh, also say hello to uh, the, your team and also your audience. Thank you so much, sir, and thank you as well for your service. The Haiti that you know now is not the same Haiti that you knew as a child. When you are seeing what's happening right now in Haiti, tell me your feedback. Well, it is uh, somewhat uh, a dream for, it's just like uh, many of us who were born in Haiti uh, during uh, in the 70s and the 80s, early 80s, um, for what's going on now, it is like a dream. Uh, uh, it is not something uh, none of us will have hoping to see. But the reality is uh, those of us who were born there, having to live outside of, country, of the country for a while, we quickly realized that uh, this is... Um, uh, something that we uh, never thought that would ever happen to, to Haiti. You and I, we talk a lot about Haiti, and I can uh, relay how painful it is when you are talking about uh, that beautiful country now changed to, uh, you call it a dream, but I call it a nightmare, and how uh, you, as uh, one of the Haitians living in the diaspora, as a community, we are suffering when we are seeing what's happening in Haiti. Indeed, indeed. Uh, we came to this country, like you, like me, like many others. We go to school, we work hard, and uh, to be uh, the citizen that we like uh, to see in Haiti. And it is very uh, uh, hurting to see our brothers and sisters are living uh, in the situation of which they are living. Our lives in Haiti uh, is worse than the life of a fly. And uh, it's, it's, not, it's not a joke, it's serious. Um, uh, here in the United States, if you abuse a pet, you go to, uh, to jail. In Haiti, dying is, uh, is something that uh, somewhat uh, taboo. You get up today with your friend, with your family, and in a few seconds, you may not see them. This is the reality of the Haitian people. You served well. Uh, you went to Afghanistan. Many are now comparing the situation of Haiti as a war zone. Is it the same lecture you are sharing? Well, when I was in Afghanistan, we trained to deal with the unknown. Because understand, we are leaving our country to go invade another country. For what's going, what, what, for my experience in Afghanistan, even in the war zone, what's going on in Haiti never happened in Afghanistan. And what make it so even uh, more upsetting is because there are Haitians who are doing this to other Haitians. This is what you and I cannot, and many others cannot understand. And they are doing what they are doing to their brothers and sisters without knowing the reason why they're doing it. Today you go to, this, uh, to, to mind your business and somebody decides to kidnap you and they decide to kill you. And those who are giving uh, uh, this uh, uh, guy, the heavy uh, 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 weaponry to kill and kidnap and destroy 
their kids and their family don't even live in the country. Obviously, uh, we know that Haiti has a security problem, and uh, maybe I can piggyback on your brain as a veteran and uh, as Haitian as well. What is the hope for Haiti when it comes to security, when it comes to safety? Many are calling for international uh, force to help fight gang violence. Some believe that we need to reinforce the Haitian National Police or the Haitian military. What do you think? Well, uh, the situation in Haiti, it's uh, the, 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 the police force, many of them are corrupt. The military, many of them are corrupt. And the politicians, many of them are corrupt. And if we are able to have Haitians of character, we can understand that they do not have a spare country. Haiti is their country. If they know the history, then they will do their best to resolve this issue themselves. So An invasion of... Go ahead. I was about to say that technically, based on what you are saying, uh, we should start an educational campaign before we start resolving the safety problem. Indeed, the safety is what? Uh, if you kept a group of people uh, depriving of many things, basic, uh, basic uh, 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 access of life, food, education, and uh, if you deprive them of all that, healthcare, then you get the result that you have. Haiti is a tropical country that used to uh, uh, have food for the people also export. Now, everything in Haiti has been uh, imported. And these people, you cannot have a nation where you have many of these people uh, lack of all the simple things that any human being should have. And what's off, they give them weaponries that come in from the United States to defend, I mean, if they don't have a job, and you set them off to do the things that they are doing now. Sadly, the folks who are giving them the heavy, heavy weaponries to do what they are doing, they're making money in Haiti and invest that money in other countries, not in Haiti. And they're giving these people weapons to kidnap, to destroy. And um, that's all these people, uh, many of them know. And this is a way of life it becomes in Haiti. Mr. Calix, you left uh, Haiti many years ago. Uh, you are now part of what we call the Haitian diaspora, Haitians living outside of uh, Haiti. What role do you think the Haitian diaspora should play in the development of Haiti? This is a good question. Um, I feel that we need to be um, somewhat more engaged with each other. We are also a divided diaspora, Haitian diaspora. Those in, hey, uh, in New York, they see things differently than those in Florida, but in the United States, we're very divided. Imagine those in Canada, those in France, those Haitians in France and Canada and Chile, uh, Brazil and so forth. We need to have a common uh, sense of purpose. The common sense of purpose is Haiti. And for this reason, we must uh, have uh, something uh, 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 constructive together in order for us uh, to come up with a solution. But if we are divided like those in Haiti, and there is no way that uh, we can achieve what we like to achieve. Let's talk about your new book, The Voice of Toussaint Louverture Challenges Us. Tell us about the inspiration behind that such amazing uh, piece of art. Well, thank you again for the beautiful question that you have asked. Uh, during COVID, I didn't feel comfortable staying home. And I was trying to see what country which I could travel not to stay home like I was in jail or prison. 
And I was able to uh, find some information about going to Benin. And when I found out about Benin, uh, two St. Louverture parents, that's where they were born. And when I got there, they were, uh, there was that uh, two St. Louverture statue in Benin. And from that point on, I said, wow, I must write a book about this, uh, uh, this, this man. When I was in Haiti, I was uh, enlisted to St. Louverture. That was the school that I've, I've attended from primary uh, to secondary uh, grade. So from that point on, I've decided to use uh, uh, the journey of Toussaint Louverture and to see if we can connect uh, the Haiti and Africa because I feel this book was written to make Haitians and people who like freedom all over the world understand that no one, no one should be living in fear. No one should be living less than human beings. All of us should be living like human beings. And this book, well, I wrote it with the hope to help Haitians and um, those, whether they're in the diaspora or in Haiti, to understand that where we came from, to understand that what we have achieved to get us where we are today. If we put together those knowledge of Toussaint Louverture and others, I believe that we can get Haiti somewhere different than where it, where is that today. Beautiful cover. Should I remind our viewers that General Toussaint Louverture was one of the uh, smartest diplomat and also soldier uh, that lead to the independence of Haiti. He at some point makes some association with the French army and then switch to the uh, Spanish army to see how he can gather information and share those information with, at that time, uh, the slaves to see how they can organize a revolution that led eventually to the Haitian independence. Someone that is dear to the Haitian culture, that is dear to the Haitian history. So the cover is not only amazing, but I feel that also the book uh, try to communicate directly to the Haitian people to tell them, this is the moment for another revolution to change the statue of Haiti. Indeed, uh, I don't say a revolution because there were only three major revolutions in the world the slave revolution that led to Haiti, the French Revolution, and the uh, American Revolution. Among the three revolutions, the slave revolution was the top because the, that revolution was fighting for freedom, for all, human decency. The other revolution, they were fighting for wealth. And there could never be another revolution as of such, however. I feel that if Haitians believe in themselves and believe where we came from, believe in the, those heroes, Toussaint Louverture, Dessalines, Capua Lamor, Henri, and, and, and so forth, then they understand the right to die for that land, which we call Haiti. Mm. So without imply, uh, uh, put, uh, 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 the knowledge this, the, the, those those uh, 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 people before us, if we, without putting the knowledge in place and learn from them, that it will be very difficult for us to go uh, 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 forward and uh, help in Haiti uh, stay as a country like uh, our ancestors was uh, were meant for the Haiti to be. Absolutely. Uh, you went to Benin, Africa and get inspired to uh, write such amazing book about uh, the general Toussaint Louverture. Do you feel that uh, Haitians should embrace more Africa in order for them to understand the importance of Haiti, not only as a land, but also as a very powerful nation to the world? Indeed. Uh, I said it uh, in my book that uh, the way for Haitians to get Haiti uh, 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 in the level where Haiti can be 
uh, just like every other country in the world, is for them to connect with uh, their ancestors, with Africa. And uh, this is where we came from. It's the same way sometimes we like to go to, yes, we were born in, in uh, we are living here as, a, uh, as Haitian, but many of us, we always like to go back home. Home is Haiti. And the home for Haitians is Africa. Though they are having their own problems, but I feel that uh, with uh, what's going on, because the world is changing, but what's going on right now, it is imperative for Haitians to connect with Africa. Thank you. Amazing conversation with uh, author Kalis. Sir, thank you so much for being here with us. And I cannot wait to have you back again on our program to talk more about Haiti, to talk more about your book, and also to inspire more Haitian Americans. Thank you for your time. Thank you so very much, uh, Mr. Uh, James Pierre, for the, this opportunity. All right, stay with us. We'll be right back with much more.